Hi everybody, I was on a recent dive trip to the Blue Heron Bridge in September 2017 and boy I sure got a lot of bad pictures but the good news is I'm only going to show you in this video my top 10 pictures of the trip. Some wide angle, some macro, some super macro. Let's check it out. For my wide angle setup I used a Nikon D7100 with a 12 to 24 millimeter wide angle lens set to 12 millimeters and a plus four diopter over the lens to allow for closer focusing. And I also used a six inch acrylic dome port, all seen here. Here's an image of the assembled camera. For wide angle, I didn't use a strobe for two reasons. Our dives were no deeper than 20 feet, so I had plenty of available light, and the visibility wasn't great, so a strobe could have caused a lot of backscatter. Three of my top 10 images were taken with this setup. For the wide angle and close focus images I shot in aperture priority mode and for the close focus wide angle images I used a somewhat smaller aperture of f8 to f11 so I could have good depth of field. For that I used a higher ISO of 560 to 800 to allow for a fast enough shutter speed to stop the action and avoid any motion blur. Now this is a wide angle image under part of the bridge. It almost looks like a mirror image, but it's not. You can see the undersurface of the water above and through it the sky above that. For some reason I really like this image. I think it's cool looking. This is a close focus wide angle image of a jellyfish with some adjacent seaweed and the undersurface noted at the right and the blue sky at the left. Pretty simple, but again, I like this shot. I love capturing a close focus wide angle image of the underwater world that shows a marine organism and my dive buddy in the same image. I was pretty close to this ox octopus so it looks quite large compared to the diver. I focused on the octopus but with good depth of field with my smaller aperture and wide angle lens, the diver is also in pretty decent focus. The diver also has a good profile and is looking at the subject. I really like this image. This wide angle image is interesting. It shows the image of my dive buddy in the left upper third of the image, the eye, and if you look carefully, I, ran it, I added a red arrow so you could see it. You can see the eye of a trumpet fish in the lower right third of the image. I really like that. Now for the macro and super macro shots, I used my Nikon D7100 with a 60 millimeter macro lens, green arrow, a 1.4x teleconverter in between the lens and camera body. You can see the red arrow. The teleconverter allows greater than one-to-one -one magnification on the sensor. I also clamped, a blue arrow, a, a flat port with a retractable plus 10 wet diopter, the white arrow. Shown here, flip down over the flat port for even more magnification. I used just one strobe, usually positioned right above the flat port and pulled in uh, tight for super macro. For macro and super macro, I keep the ISO at the lowest, 100, the shutter speed at 1 to 200 of a second to sync with the strobe, and my aperture is generally small, f18 or smaller, uh, to allow for somewhat better depth of field. Now here's a macro shot showing a portrait of a small octopus. My strobe was in front and above the flat port. Here's a macro portrait of a yellow ray. Its two eyes are in focus up above. The actual mouth, of course, is on the undersurface of the animal, but the white markings highlighted by the red arrows here that I added, the white markings are such that it looks like the ray is frowning, and I think this uh, portrays somewhat of an interesting portrait image. Now, this is a beautiful red box crab. Nothing too technical or special, I just love this cool looking subject. This image is a, shows the dazzling bright blue eyes of a simple hermit crab. Now I got a couple ultra super macro shots. This shows the compound eye of a box crab. It's really cool. To me it looks kind of like a fingernail or something. And this is an ultra super macro shot of the eye of a ray. And it shows the flap or operculum dropping down from above to provide camouflage and limit the incoming light to the ray's eye on a bright sunny day. Anyway, I found that people think I'm a better photographer than I really am when I just show them my very best pictures. Also, it's less boring for everyone involved. Thanks for your attention and I hope you found this helpful.